guys, it's Jessie V, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about a very creepy unsolved mystery. Unsolved mysteries are like my favorite thing to research and film. They're just so intriguing to me, and they get us all thinking, and I'm always excited to hear what you guys think about the story. As you can tell by the title, the name of our unsolved mystery is The Bleeding House, which sounds awful, and it is, and I'll get into that in just a second. Before I get started, in case you have not seen my previous video. Yes, we've got a new November backdrop here. I love how it's mountains and snow and this really cool sky above me. It's just perfect for this time of year. So if you guys would like to win it, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel. So my Jessie V channel, turn on your notification bell and then head over to my new book channel. It is called Jessie's Bookshelf. I will link it down below. All you have to do is subscribe there and I'll be picking someone that I see commenting on all of the videos that I post post this month. And you can comment absolutely anything as long as I see your username pop up on all of my October videos. I will choose you. And if you want a bonus entry, so this is not essential whatsoever, go ahead and add me as a friend on Goodreads. This is a completely free app. This is not sponsored. It's just one of my favorite apps ever. And I want to be your friend on there, so I will also link that down below in the description. Okay, so one last announcement before we get right into today's video. You guys know I love slime. It's like one of my favorite things ever. So we just launched three new slimes on our website that I'm so excited about. So you know how a couple years ago I did a whole video on like mood rings? And I've always loved those as a kid because you put the ring on, it changes color to whatever your mood is. I got that in a slime version. This is called Mood Mud. And when you get it, it'll be two different colors. So this one is purple and pink. And then when you take it out and start playing with the slime, it's gonna change depending on your mood. And we do have a limited quantity of these. So if you would like one, I linked it down below. I'm probably gonna try it out on the vlog channel because I want to see what my mood is. I want to know what color I am. Then we have a slime called Galactic Ooze. It kind of looks like a scientist vial or something and I love all the different colors it comes with and it's literally the gooeyest ooeyest slime. And then we have the Moon Spacescape slime. This is so cool because there's different parts to it. So you have your typical sparkly slime, then you have sort of like a sand sort of mud slime, and then you have sparkly and you mix it all together and it's this really cool space slime. So if you guys would like any of these new three slimes, I have a link them down below. All right guys, let's get right into today's video talking about the bleeding house. The house in question is located at 1114 Fountain Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. It was built in 1945 and is very small and cozy. And this husband and wife named William and Minnie Winston lived there for over two decades. William was 79, Minnie was 77 and they had raised three children in that house who were adults by the time this incident happened. At the time William was in very poor health so Minnie was essentially his caregiver all day long. His kidneys were very bad, they didn't function well so he received dialysis on a daily basis. And after something so bizarre happened in their house on September of 1987, it became known as the Blood House on Fountain Drive. So so let's talk about the night the walls bled. On the evening of September 8th, Minnie had gotten into the bath for a much needed time to relax and unwind. But when she emerged from the tub around 11.30 p.m., she felt something wet underneath her feet. It didn't feel like water, it was much thicker than that, and much stickier. When she looked down, she saw that whatever she had stepped in was very red and was spraying through the bathroom's tiled floor like a sprinkler. She literally described this as a sprinkler. And when she exited the bathroom, she realized that this was everywhere. It was in the hallway, in the kitchen, in the living room, in one of the bedrooms, in the basement. It was even coming out of the house's crawl space. Basically, everywhere they looked, this red stuff was on the floor, on the walls, it was awful. When I think of this, it reminds me of that scene from The Shining where the elevator doors open and all the blood like rushes out. So it was just a horrifying sight to see because obviously it looked like blood. But if they tried to think about it logically, that would be impossible, right? There was just no source for it to come from. No crime was committed. There were no 
bodies in the ceiling or under the floor. It had just been a normal evening and then suddenly everything changed. The house appeared to be bleeding. So the couple called 911 and police and EMT showed up to the house ready to treat someone for fatal wounds, but when they arrived, they were surprised that no one was injured. They have on file that William told them, I'm not bleeding, my wife's not bleeding, nobody else was here. They claim that they had locked all their doors and armed their security at 9.30 p.m., at which time the house was completely clean. And when Minnie had made the gruesome discovery, no alarms had been tripped, no windows had been broken, no one had gotten into the house. They were the only ones there. Samples of the substance were taken and sent off to the state crime lab, and the results came back quickly and everyone was shocked because it was blood. And it wasn't the result of William's dialysis equipment malfunctioning because a lot of people thought that at first, because the test results also confirmed that this blood did not come from William or his wife, Minnie. It was type O blood and they were type A. And the police were baffled and not just because of the blood itself, but it was because they just could not figure out if there was a crime that they had to investigate. So they were kind of like, well, what do we do about this? So let's talk about the aftermath. In the days after the incident, their house was swarmed by the media and crowds of people. This couple was being harassed like crazy. Their phone was ringing all through the night. People were knocking on their door. Press was asking a million questions that they didn't have answers to. They just could not escape it. People would literally go up to their windows and peer inside the house, trying to get any glimpse that they could of this bleeding house. An officer was quoted as saying, we have not stopped looking because we know houses don't bleed, but we haven't determined that a crime was committed and that is our primary concern. But soon after they couldn't find anything, they just gave up. With no evidence that a crime had actually been committed, there was no reason for the police to continue investigating. So the case is still to this day marked as unsolved. So let's talk about the theories that people have about why this may have happened. So firstly, many people think that this was all just a hoax. Even one of the police officers who worked on the case really believes that it was a hoax. The rumors are that William had access to a lot of human blood because of his dialysis treatment, which I don't know how much that makes sense. So people think that he did this to get attention from his children because they were having a lot of family issues and maybe if his children saw this happening on the news, they would come home, work things out. But then on the other side of things, one of their children actually worked in a hospital and so they also had a lot of access to human blood and they may have decided to do this to their parents to get back at them for whatever they were fighting about. I mean, it all seems a little bit extreme stream to me. And then the other theory is based on superstitions that maybe this was something supernatural or paranormal that happened. And a lot of paranormal investigators have been to this house and have felt a really negative presence. And they really do believe that something otherworldly did this to them. What's so bizarre is that William and Minnie never moved out of their house after all of this happened. And when the media asked them why, they had a bunch of different answers depending on when they were asked. For example, one time they said, it was just rust and mud. Another time they said, it was red dye that had leached out from a rug. Another time they said, it was contaminated water from leaky pipes. The thing is, whatever they were saying is untrue because this substance was tested and it was blood. Like they can't deny that, but yet they do. Anyways, what do you guys think? Please comment down below. And if you really enjoy me doing these unsolved crimes and mysteries, give this video a thumbs up and let me know because I love doing them, but I also want to know if this is the content that you guys would like to see from me. Anyways though, I hope you did enjoy this video. Don't forget if you would like any of our new slimes, I have linked them down below. And don't forget to check out my Jessie's Bookshelf channel to be entered into the backdrop giveaway. But I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!